Hey farm friends, it is cold today. It is 45 degrees and it is currently sleeting. <laughs> I feel like a weather caster. Um, it's cold and we have some weather coming up actually on uh, Christmas Eve with a low of 17 degrees. We usually don't get down into the teens until January and February. Um, so this is early for us. We've had a lot of odd weather um, just out of the norm and we are preparing the animals for that cold snap, that super cold snap that we have coming. And today is just a day of preparation. Um, this is our first day of Christmas break, official day of Christmas break, and we are having uh, a lot of fun thinking about our plans for the next year. Uh, Zach and I have been planning a lot, something that he is working on today. He's been clearing out the side of the barn uh, for the goats, something that we have been waiting to get started on until we had some time during the daylight hours. Um, so we've been working on that today, and we have come up with a solution for our goat fencing. So we've come up with a solution for that that we're gonna show you. I'm on my way through the barn and I need to check for eggs in here. They have been laying them in here in this hay. This is Eleanor and Zach's hay fort. I've been checking the bucket to see if a chicken decides to lay in there. Nobody's laid in there. But there's an egg over here. I'm gonna have to take it out of here for y'all to see. Oh, it's a big egg. Look at this Moran's egg. That egg is huge. Look how big it is. I just saw that the price of eggs in our local Sam's Club is up over $8 for a dozen. That's just wild to me. We're very, very thankful and blessed to have our chicken's eggs. I thank our girls all the time for their hard work keeping us in eggs because that is one of Eleanor's absolute favorite foods. I'm gonna go see what progress Zach has made. So this will be the pathway down to the garden. That's where the goats currently are over there. And they're gonna get this whole hillside up here and this is going to be their side of the barn. Let's see what Zach's up to. Hey. Hey. You have loaded a lot of wood. Yeah. <laughs> You've been working hard today. Yep. I got most of it out. There's still a little bit more just kind of odds and ends type stuff and then a couple of beams that I can't get by myself. Yeah, when you got to teamwork those. Yeah. It's looking really good though. Yeah, it's almost, it's getting there. It's probably about halfway. And I can't remember when we measured this. Did we say it's I think we, 30 by 15 or? I think that's about right. Maybe 35 by 15. And there's so much stuff like hiding in here. <laughs> yeah, I was finding moles in here earlier. Like alive? Yeah. Yeah, we know we've got moles. I would rather see moles than rats. Oh yeah, I didn't see any of those. That's good. But there are definitely some spots around our posts that we gotta fill in with cement and then get some dirt just to fill some spots. But for the most part, it's looking good. There's an old corner hay feeder right here. Cow slash horse hay feeder that we're gonna put up somewhere. Yep, it'll get used again. I'm excited about that. Let's look in here. It's kind of dark in here. I've got some lights that we're going to hang. There's an old cedar of some kind. I have no idea. I'd love to look oh, up yeah. and see like how that, that thing worked. Yeah, mm -hmm. I called it a cedar, a planter, I guess. There's a few of those around here, too. Yeah. We've got some batteries we need to haul to the recycling. We've got a bent gate. I don't know what we'll ever use it for with it being bent. Mm. Uh, he's done a good job. This wall right here leads into a room that we have inside the barn. This is like the side of the barn and the inside of the barn is in there. And I've considered us putting a door here because we've got mini fridges in there. And I was looking earlier thinking that 
we would need to do something to get um, an extension cord if we do lights that plug in or run an electric wire and I was like well we'll just cut a hole I guess and then I realized that this right here goes straight into that tack room and yeah. so we could feed it through there or just go yeah. over the beam up there it does too yeah so we'll be doing that and we have this corner over here that, that one's has pushed be. out over time so we've got a Yep. Something. We know what the something was. It was a whole family of groundhogs living in here. Oh, yeah, that huge hole When we over first there. moved here. It's bad. It's cold, so I don't have to worry about snakes. But, yeah, look at that hole down in there. Yep. So we've got to fix all that. I see some barbed wire down in there. So this is more than just moving wood to be able to get the goats in here. Um, but we had a whole family of groundhogs living and digging holes under this barn when we first moved in. And we had to exterminate them. <laughs> we had to get them out of here because they were destroying stuff. Um, they had a lead deficiency. They had a lead deficiency. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. I got some saved rabbit slash goat poop compost. Yeah, probably put that down under the hay whenever we mulch the garden later. Sounds good. Yeah, we've got to mulch the garden. We have a lot of stuff to do before this cold weather. Um, but are you ready to measure um, the fencing for the goats? Yeah, I guess so. Now that I've got the big pile of wood done, I can take a break and come back to this later. Yeah. Thankfully, we have some time on yeah. Christmas break to yeah. work on this stuff. Oh, yeah. That is a, a nice load of wood. Oh, yeah. We'll find some uses for look at that huge block yeah i videoed that earlier i need to i was going to put it up on shorts and this reels is massive and see if folks had any ideas of what we should do with it make a good counter yeah in that tack room i want to go show them the tack room while you get the um the measure what do you call that thing i don't know <laughs> electric measuring stick i mean it's not electric it's not. i mean it is it <laughs> no, is electric you just roll with it but it's it's electric it's a counter yeah but it's not electric when you roll at it, it oh it. i was thinking that was digital Never no mind. no it's kind of like a um pedometer of steps um an odometer in a car yeah mileage so it's kind of like that all right, that's what we're gonna use to measure our fence. It's our measuring wheel. So here's our tack room that I was talking about. Our lights aren't on in here right now. But this is what I was considering for the future being a milking room. And right on the other side of this wall is into that side of the barn that I was talking about. So we could have a step up in there and a door right here or in this area even if it's a short door, it could be a short door, that I can open and the goats come through and then milk in here. And then we've already got refrigerators in here, which you need to refrigerate your goat's milk. As soon as you milk it, you wanna bring that temperature down. Uh, and that's what keeps it from being very goaty. And also um, not having a buck with your herd will take the goatiness out, it won't be as strong. So yeah, that is the thoughts around this. All right, let's go measure our fence. It's that hooded thing again. Oh, it's the hooded ducks. Oh. I only see one, I don't see the other one yet. She may have dove. Oh, I hate to disturb them even being out here. We've had a pair of hooded um, wood ducks. It's wood ducks, isn't it? No, 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 no. It no. starts with a W, but it's, it's not. Mm, I'll look it up. We've had a pair of ducks. They're beautiful, but they're called a hooded duck, and they dive. And they were here last year, and Zach just saw the male fly into the pond. I bet the female is either underwater at the edge. She blends in really easily. Um, hooded have... merganser? See, I was right. Merganser? I don't know. Hooded? Okay, okay. Let's see if I can show it. It may or may not show up, but... Uh, it does a little... Um, I took some pictures of them last year when they were here, but they roosted in a tree and they were here several days and I would come out early in the morning um, to just watch them because they dive and they have bright red eyes. They're really neat. 
I'll put some pictures in uh, that I took last year of them. And the female is harder to see, so it may be out there and we just can't yeah, see it. Yeah, she's like the same color as the leaves in the brush. But the male has just this gorgeous hood. Okay, we gotta get back to what we're doing. Yep. <laughs> we could watch birds <laughs> like all the time. That's yeah. one reason we absolutely love having the pond. It draws a lot of really neat bird wildlife. It does. There's a really big blue heron out here this morning when Eleanor and I were out here. Just about every day. Mm -hmm. it, I, always, I call him Frank, but <laughs> Frank's here just about every day. And he's made friends with our geese and our ducks. He's not afraid of, of them anymore. Yeah. He was afraid. They hang uh, out together. He, he actually kind of got after them a little bit the other day. He just kind of like opened his mouth like, hey, get back. I'm fishing here. <laughs> hey there, babies. Got to put some more hay out for you. So we had a bit of a hay situation. We got some hay um, last week and they would not eat it. They were eating just a tiny bit of it. And I think it was just a fluke, like part of the bale. You can see all of the waste down here. It's kind of, it's the sagebrush grass, which they don't eat. And I can see some in the feeder. It's fluffy. It's got, um, it's a really fluffy, uh, dandelion type seeds on top don't eat don't eat yeah, me unfortunately it's all through those bales yeah too. it's all through them but they are eating around it so it's not a total waste we didn't waste all of our money thankfully um okay. this is my buddy right there you can't eat me i know i'm delicious but you can't you can't eat me you can't do it look at miss honey she has such a pretty face I think she's a beautiful goat. Yeah. Say, get Gravy it. said, what about oh, me? Am goat. I beautiful? He was eating. He was trying to eat the mic cord. Can't do that, man. And then Miss Willow. Y'all look at Willow. Willow, you're looking so good. You are looking so good, girl. Look at your body. You're beautiful. Looking so nice. Yeah. We actually, um, we got Willow. A supplement this is their grain that they get in here it's just pellets and then they've got their loose goat mineral and then we got this specifically for willow it's a goat balancer and it's higher protein and it's meant specifically for milk producing goats which she's not but with her being pregnant hopefully we wanted to get her a little something extra. Look at them. Y'all. <laughs> How are y'all? Nope. Looks like a three-headed goat. Yep. They got their full meal this morning, and then Eleanor also fed them again. Y'all get out of the fence. I'll get out a of the fence. While so ago. this is a good transition to what we're about to talk about, which is the solution we've come up with for their fencing. Yeah. Because do y'all see this? Look at this fence. Look at this fence. Can you see how yep. bent up it is? Willow taught the kids a new trick when she yes. got here. Yes, and down here it's the same way. It's all bent and loose. Look how loose this is. It's all loose. It was Willow not like to, that. Willow likes to climb on the fence. Yes, she does. Which we've, we've heard and we knew about goats, but our babies, they haven't been doing that. Um, but she does it and she has taught them you're a bad influence. <laughs> she said, no, I'm not. I'm good. I'm still good. You're so beautiful, girl. Um, so we have decided not to put in permanent fencing for these goats. Um, they're not staying here. If you watch our videos, y'all know they're all going to yell at us as we walk away. <laughs> <laughs> but I've struggled because where I want to put the goats, the plan this entire time leading up to us getting them and everything has been for them to get this whole hillside up here. But for them to get the hillside, we were gonna build them a structure so that they had a permanent barn up there. But we have a barn right here <laughs> and it's not being used for the animals and it needs to be. And so our solution was to block from here all the way to here. And I've struggled with that because I love this view. I love it being open. It's just beautiful. Yep. The and the chickens ducks. and the ducks run through here all the time. Yep. Um, 
So I've struggled with wanting to put something permanent here also for mowing the grass um, because we have good, thick, beautiful grass, which is going to be great for the ducks. The chickens are, are coming with you, babe, <laughs> mm -hmm. as usual. But our solution to this is movable Premier One electric fencing. And we are prepared to order it. We've been saving, prepared to order our fencing mm -hmm. so that we can get the goats moved as soon as we have the side of the barn ready. Yep. And I've talked to a couple of folks who have some experience with the Premier One fencing. Uh, Jason from Cog Hill uh, gave me some really good advice this past week. And so I've got an idea of what kind we need and we're definitely going to go with the double spiked uh, posts because they're just more stable, I think. And um, I think it's going to work really well with this area. For me, it was kind of silly <laughs> when I had the, the idea. I'm like, we can use Premier One. My, my hesitation with going with the movable electric fencing is I'm not crazy about the way it looks. I just have never cared for the way it looks for me personally and I like the way permanent fencing looks better but truly um, it is the better solution for goats and it's the better solution for us for now we may change our minds later um, but it's a better solution for now because we can rotationally graze them if we want to we can split this pasture because it's big we can split this in half um, we can move them to an area that we maybe want them to focus on and clear out. Uh, it gives us just way more versatility. Um, and it makes it to where if we want to, if we're going to have something here at the farm, we're going to have family over, friends over, we can take down the run that goes from the barn to over here just temporarily for the day. Um, it, and we, we don't know yet. We don't know yeah. exactly... Um, how we're going to set that up, but we've got to get it measured so we know how much fencing that we yeah. need. And I, I really like the idea of being able to take down that run. And at one point we even thought, well, okay, let's do permanent fencing out here. Yeah. And then the run to the barn will be the uh, kind of electric. movable electric yeah. stuff. But it makes, it really does make a lot more well, sense. And what, we, what we've been worried about predator-wise is stray dogs and coyotes and premier one actually has a special type of fencing that they made especially for coyotes dogs and bears and so we know that it'll work for that it's so. going to be a lot of peace of mind and then the aspect of the goats climbing on the fence they mm -hmm. can't climb on the electric fence. Yeah. They're not going to be destroying the fence within a year of putting it in. Um, and I had said, well, if we're going to put up permanent fencing out here, we're going to electrify it to keep them off the fence. You do like three to four strands of single uh, wire electric. And we would be doing electric on a permanent fence anyway. So I'm like, maybe we just need to go with the movable electric. So that's, that's how we landed there. Um, we're going to test out. It works for a ton of people. I felt yeah. so silly when I had the realization. I'm like, our friends at Cog Hill use it. Our friends mm -hmm. at Chestnut Hills use it. Yeah. Um, they move everything around. It really makes the most sense um, where Willow came from. That's yeah. what they do. <laughs> Look at her looking at us. And really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all can't think, see it. Uh... But she's like peeking under, <laughs> under the tarp <laughs> watching us. I think here lately we've seen a lot of people using the fencing for larger livestock, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be on YouTube um, or like you were saying, where Willow came from, them using it. And then uh, we've no, with uh, the folks at Cog Hill moving Moody and Joe around. Yeah. And uh, so being able to see it in action has helped, I think, a lot with that. Yeah. And it, it means, too, that... If we decide we want to move the goats on that hill for a little bit mm -hmm. um, and we've got a line of brush that I would love for them to work on. Yeah, It's, it's um, awesome that we'll be able to do some rotational grazing during certain seasons if we decide we want to. Yeah. Go, uh, 
go we gotta stand, have our helpers. Go stand where you want the corner of the fence to be. Okay. And I'll come to you. Okay. He said, go to where I want the corner of the fence to be. So I think here, the garden fence is right there. We gotta have a path up to the pigs somewhat. The plan is also to have our pasture coops inside of this electric fence as well, and that will help protect them from any predators. Love this tree. The goats are gonna love this tree too. <laughs> hey, pigs. We hit 200 at the corner back there. 200 from the barn? Yeah. That's close, right? Add two feet. Look how the chickens have been up here scratching in all of yeah, this. They've been loving coming up here. All right, how far are we going? Um, maybe 15 more feet and then down. All right, I don't want to go through this, so right here's good. <laughs> okay. Y'all, if, if I could redo our property, and pick a new location for my house, it would be up here on this hill. Here's you have a beautiful view of the pond and this pasture. But it sure is nice that the goats get it instead. You want it on this side of the ditch or that side of the ditch? That's been my struggle too, it's with this is runoff I think, ditch. I think this side of the ditch just so we don't have to think about, we just don't have to think about yeah. the ditch. Okay. So we'll go down to like here-ish. Okay. Because the water's never gonna get this high, no matter how it is. And so we know from about here down, it'll get soggy, mm -hmm. but certain about here, it's not gonna be as soggy, so. Yeah. And the hillside stays pretty dry, so I think this will be good. Sounds good. We are at 375. And here you wanted it to be 20 feet out. Yeah, I wanted it to come across here and then kind of square off before it goes back up to the barn. Five ninety-one and a half. Ooh, so 600 feet of fencing. Yep. Yeah, was a well. It's gotta be done. I'm glad we've been saving. Yeah. I'm glad we have the funds to do this. Um, it is not cheap having animals and giving them the best that you can. Yeah. Well, it's not um, cheap to keep them safe and healthy. That's the biggest thing. Mm -mm. No. Nope. It's hard to do that. It's gotta be done. And it's gonna be great. Like just looking at the hill. Yeah, they're gonna love it. They're gonna be so much happier. And I think we are too. I can't wait to see them running. Yeah. That's what, when we let them out, they run. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanna see. I wanna see them running down the hill, coming in, hopefully mm -hmm. Willow with her babies, and they'll be super safe. Mm -hmm. um, dogs are our main predator here, and that has been my biggest worry with the goats, cause I, as me and my friend Tracy say, if something happens to my goats, we're gonna be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's gonna keep them safe. And then we're also gonna have our um, breeding groups, some of our breeding groups for our chickens, which we sell their eggs and we hatch their chicks. So we have to separate out our breeds and our uh, selections for egg colors. We're breeding those. And I wanted to have them in the pasture. I wanted to have them in the pasture, all of them last year, but we just couldn't uh, come up with a good way to keep them safe. And it was kind of the end of the season at that point. So for this year, they're gonna be inside of an electric fence. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna have to worry about dogs. Yep. So that's gonna be That'll great. That'll be really nice. It's gonna be great. So we love our chickens too. Mm -hmm. We love all of our animals. Here they come, checking it yep. all out. Here they come. Did y'all hear that? You're gonna get a nice, safe pasture gonna hang out with the goats like you already like to do. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we asked <laughs> for suggestions for what to name this new Splash Copper Moran rooster. Yes, I love him. And we had several folks say Rusty. Oh, I like... I like Rusty. Wal Rusty and Walker. Yeah. The so patriarchs think... of our Morons breeding. Yeah. I love that. And look, so that is a Splash Copper Morons, now named Rusty, with a Splash Morons hen. She's not copper. Um, she doesn't have that gold color on her, that copper color. And then that is a black copper marons back there. His primary color is black, and his primary color is splash. And there goes a black marons hen. <laughs> All of these are going to get separated off very soon for breeding. Well, we've got Goat some fencing. Rooster. We've got some fencing to order. Yeah. We got our game plan. Maybe some money to move around. Maybe some money to move around. And we may we may back off. Um, we may not do that whole hill. We may back it off yeah. just a little bit. It was. It wound up being more of a distance. Look at her climb. Then up. look. Look oh, at her. Man. Oh, you cannot see her, but Willow. You can kind of see her. Yeah. She's trying to climb to get to the vines. Yeah. Get to the vines. Climbing that fencing. Goodness gracious. I mean, so that's won't, like. Won't be able to do that with the Premier One. 60 and, pounds of pressure yeah. <laughs> pushing down on the fence. And I mean, it's it's already made a big difference just since she's been here. Y'all mm -hmm. saw how loose it is over there. Mm -hmm. but, and I mean, that um, fence stretches out. That's, yeah. that's part of it. And anytime I'm in the garden, she loves to be over there on the fence up against the garden. She'll stand on it and watch me. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but that's going to stop and that's yeah. going to get better mm -hmm. and their hay feeder is actually going to be in here um we're going to do all their feed their hay feeder and everything in here and my plan for the layout so the electric fence will start at that corner like we measured and it'll end right here so it's a, it's a long run it's going to take a high power charger too but premier one has all of that but the idea is we'll kind of have a gate section here Yep. where the fencing will go over it and we can turn the fencing off and move it. And that will be an everyday thing. And then we'll come in here. We'll have feed and hay ready for them right here. But there will be fencing here and here. So this will be their entrance, ultimately. Yep. Their entrance will be here. And we'll have gonna stalls love it. set up back there. And it's going to be great. I really do think we're going to love it, too. Oh, I do. I definitely do. All righty, farm friends. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today here at Head Family Farm. We've enjoyed sharing our dreams with you and the current projects that we're working on. Y'all make sure and stick around so you get to see how those projects turn out. And uh, we always do these projects together. And we get to share our joy with you. And that's really why we do this is to share our joy with you. So we thank you so much for being here. We can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Y'all have a very Merry Christmas, a great holiday season. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much, farm friends. Y'all have a good one.